Welcome to Mathematics. It is week five of term two, and I'm very glad that you are here and that you are still working hard. We will be focusing on counting with money, number concept, money sums, and symmetry. We're going to have lots of fun with symmetry. Mental mathematics. I want you to think quickly and I want you to work accurately. Activity one, I give you the number name. I would like you to write the number symbol. Make groups of 10 and then add the sum. So they give me nine plus seven. To make a group of 10, I need to add one to the nine. So I take one away from the seven and I say nine plus one is 10. Now, because I took one away from the seven, I only have six remaining. So I'm going to add that six to my 10 and get my answer of 16. For activity three, you have to tell me how many sides and how many corners each shape has. Activity four, you have to do calculations. Read the sum carefully and try and do it as fast as you can. Activity five, you use need to use the bigger than, equal to, and smaller than symbols. First, go work out what the answer of the sum is, and then you decide what symbol to use. I would like you to color the one rand on the right hand side orange, and color the 50 cents green. Remember, 100 cents is the same as one rand. Add up the money. If it adds up to 1 rand, you color it orange. If it adds up to 50 cents, you color it green. I would like you to help the farmer get to the barn by counting in threes. On the 100 chart, you're going to color in, counting in fours. Then basic addition and subtraction. Try and do it as quickly as possible. See if you can do it within 5 minutes. Get a timer, time yourself, and write the time down somewhere. Use the bigger than, smaller than, or equal to symbols to compare these numbers. The next activity, you have to use some dice, find the missing number, and then use your symbols to compare them. For place value, I give you a number. And a lot of blocks, you have to go and color in the amount of blocks using your tens and units. I did 24 as an example. 24, I break up into two tens and four units. So I colored two ten strips and four unit blocks. Word problems. Now remember with word problems, always first thing, is my answer going to be bigger? Or smaller and then you choose what type of sum you're going to do let's look at the first one it says a pineapple costs three rand how many pineapples can i buy with 25 rand and how much change do i get now this is a tricky one so i need you to think carefully you first need to go work out how many pineapples you can buy so go count in threes and try and get as close to 25 as you can after that, you have to do another sum to work out how much change you will get. Next, it says, there are 13 grade 2 children in our class. Each child gets two workbooks. How many workbooks were handed out? Go think. Is my answer going to be more or less? What type of sum are you going to do for this one? Katie and John have 19 crayons. If they share it equally among them, how many will each one get? Share equally is your clue in that sum. Lastly, Mrs. May buys a burger for 10 rand, a soft drink for 4 rand, and an ice cream for 2 rand. If she pays for all of these three items with 35 rand, how much change? will she get once again you're going to do more than one sum 
you're first going to work out how much all of these things cost all together. After that, you're going to work out how much change you need to get. When we halve something, we divide it into two equal parts. So now I've got two equal parts. They fit on top of each other. They are the same size. So it was one whole and then I cut it into two parts. And we call this a half. Now we write, can also write is this is one of the two parts. I cut it into two parts and this is one of them. So we can also write a half as one over two. So next we look at thirds. And if you listen to the word, it actually tells you how many pieces I'm going to break it into. So thirds means I'm going to make three pieces. So I take my one whole and I divide it into three pieces. So it was one thing and then I made it into smaller parts and it's three smaller parts. We call each one of them. So this one is a third. We can also like earlier, this is one of the three parts. Now, if I want to put those two together, I will say they are two thirds because it is two of the three parts. The bottom number almost tells me the total number of parts. And the top number, how many I've got of them. Quarters means I'm going to divide it into four parts. Okay, so there's my quarters. Remember, I had one whole and I broke it into smaller parts. And I call them quarters or like this one will be one of the four pieces this one will also be one of the four pieces and if i keep those two together it will be two quarters i want you to remember with fractions you can't just take anything and say okay this is thirds now no this is one whole strip and this is a strip and this is a strip. So these are three strips. It is when I take something that was a whole and I break it into smaller parts, then it becomes fractions. So now I can say this is a fraction. These are whole pages. If I take them and I break them into smaller parts, if I look at each block, there's 10 blocks on there. So each little block will be Tenth. Or if I color in three of them, I will say it will be three of the ten blocks. But I can't say this one by itself is a fraction. This is one whole strip. So remember, when we do fractions, it means you break it up into smaller pieces. So therefore, a fraction is smaller than a whole. When we do money sums, you need to be able to add rands. When I take a shape and I... I want you to go draw the line of symmetry. Then you have to draw the other half of this picture. Lastly, you have to tell me, does a rectangle or a square have more lines of symmetry. Here are a few practical things that you can go and practice with symmetry. I am going to work out how long it takes me to do certain activities. So if I look at number one, it says paint a paper rocket. I started at the long hand is on the six which tells me half fast the shorthand 
is past the one. So it tells me I started at half past one. Let's see what time I ended. The long hand is on the 12, which tells me o'clock, and the short hand is on the two. So I ended at two o'clock. It didn't take me a lot of hours to do it. It took me minutes. So I'm going to count in minutes. To count in minutes, we count in fives. So I'm going to start here at the six at my starting time. Time in my minutes. I'm going to see how many minutes it took. So I'm going to count in fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. It took me 30 minutes to do this activity. If I look at number two, it asks, make and paint paper planet. How long did that take me? So let's look at the start time. I start at o'clock and it is three o'clock. I end it at five o'clock. So my minutes did not change only the hours change so this time i am going to count in hours so let's see how many hours it took me so if i start at three and i end it at five i'm going to jump i'm going to count in ones because i'm counting hours one two it took me two hours to do this activity Go and try number three and four by yourself. When we measure the mass of something, we measure how light or how heavy it is. And we use grams or kilograms to do that. Something that weighs a gram does not weigh a lot. Here are a few examples of things that only weighs about one gram. One paper clip, one penlet, and one piece of chewing gum. So they are very light. So a gram does not weigh a lot. However, a kilogram weighs a bit more. Here are a few examples. One liter of milk weighs a kilogram. Two loaves of bread is a kilogram or about seven apples. Now you will need a thousand grams to make up one kilogram. So a thousand paper clips will give me more or less one kilogram. You can see the weight of this bag of sugar is indicated at the bottom. This bag of sugar weighs one kilogram.